Thanks everybody for joining us for this Lunch and Learn this uh, Tuesday afternoon. We're joined by Chris Cotton of AutoFix uh, Shop Coaching. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about what numbers you should be tracking and what will make you happy when tracking those. So awesome. Thank you so much, Maddie and Trisha for having me. Um, I know uh, last month was kind of, I can't believe it's been a month since we had the snowstorm here in Texas and, and everything like that. But I do appreciate you guys um, letting me move this back. I, I honestly, I don't know that we had much of a choice, but I do appreciate it. And for all those of you that signed up uh, earlier than that, I do appreciate you signing up early and then coming back in again. So I'm gonna get started in here. Um, Maddie, if you need me to stop to answer any questions or anything, just let me know. Um, and outside of that, we'll get going. So when, when the IGONC asked me to do this, I was trying to think of something uh, new, obviously, but also tied into some of the other stuff that I do, like the, the auto shop profits and cash flow management and things like that. And, and Maddie asked me to go over some numbers, um, gross profit metrics, and then what our expenses should be. So um, again, before we get started, though, I want to just say, Chris, my name is Chris Cotton, president of AutoFix Auto Shop Coaching. If you guys want to write down my phone number, feel more than free to do that. That's my cell phone number that comes straight to me, 580-491-3519. And then if you have any questions or follow up, um, uh, I'm going to throw you guys a little bone in here. And if you uh, take me up on it, you can send that email to chris at autofixsos.com. Okay. So my goal for today during this lunch meeting is I want you to understand what my number one KPI to track is. This is something that some of you may track. You may think about it. You may not. It depends on your point of sale system and and things like that but it had a huge impact on my business when i had my shop what other kpis i believe are most important and i also want you to understand what your gross profit goal should be i want you to have an average repair order goal for your shop based on your numbers not what anybody else says or the shop down the street or anything like that and I want you to learn what percentage, of what percentage of total income should go to your service advisor, advertising and other expenses, okay? And then, so here's my disclaimer. I am an auto shop coach. I do have my own KPIs and my own metrics that I hold my clients accountable to. If you're with another coaching company, I think that's great that you are with another coaching company. Um, and just realize that their goals for you or the goals that you set may be different, right? Not, not better, not worse, but just different. And so I think that's great. Um, I think everybody should have a shop coach. I re realize that I can't coach everybody, um, but I think it will definitely enhance your business. So having said that, we'll move on right along. So guys, I'm going to give it to you right here up front. This is my number one KPI to track, um, average estimate. And just to give you a little bit of background on average estimate, when I had my shop, we were consistently 25 to 30,000 a week in sales. And I always thought like most shop owners do that I need more cars. I got to have more cars. I got to have more cars. I got to have more cars. I got to squeeze more stuff through the pipe, right? And, and I'll tell you a two inch pipe can only handle two inches worth of stuff. So when I, when I was talking to my coach, he's like, Chris, do you know what your average estimate is and your unsold work? And I'm like, don't have a clue. All I know is I got to have more cars today. I got to have more cars, so more cars, more cars, more cars. So what we focused on was what my average estimate was and how it related to my average repair order. And what I found out is that great. I was selling 25 to 30,000 a week in sales but we were writing another $50,000 a week in estimates that we weren't selling. And so at that point it becomes, okay, how do we, how do we focus on that instead of more cars? Focus on taking care of your customers better and making sure that they're served in a better way. And, and it helps the customer first and foremost, and then it also helps us in the end, right? So,
the average estimate has to be the KPI that you focus on first. And goal is average estimates 450, then guess what? You're never going to get there. And if you're not tracking and measuring it, can't. So, so what should my average estimate be? Well, that depends on your closing ratio, right? And at the at the same time, on the closing ratio, again, I'm not looking, I'm not asking you to dig for dollars. I'm not asking you to look for anything else or do anything else. Just look at the car, do a great inspection, have a great process, and share with what the car tells you. Okay. So if your average repair order goal is 500 and your closing ratio is 50 percent, then your average estimate goal is thousand dollars. Right. That's pretty easy. Where it gets tricky is, is if your average repair order goal is $500 and your closing ratio is 35%, then your average estimate goal should be $1428.57. And so you're basically taking your $500 and dividing it by 0.35 and that gives you what your average estimate goal should be. Now, having said that, what I also want you to do is, you know, tie up the loose ends in your closing and your sales presentations and things like that. If your closing ratio is 35%, then you've got issues, right? So, you know, you've, you've got some things that you need to close in a loop and in the gap. Um, whether it be, you know, how you make your presentations, are you doing digital vehicle inspections? If so, how many pictures are you sending? Um, is your service rider, are they just texting or emailing the digital vehicle inspection because they don't want to talk to anybody? Do you send it? And then after your, your customer, um, so you know, are you doing a follow-up call on that just to tell them, Hey, I saw you passed over this issue, but I think there's a little bit more to it. So let's talk about it. Um, so does anybody out there now that's on here? Do you track average estimate at all, either on an Excel spreadsheet, and that's how we had to do it when I started, or through your point of sale system? So if you guys could chime in and uh, just give me a thumbs up and say, yeah, I track it, or no, this is um, foreign ground to me. I've never heard of it, and I think you're crazy. Uh, that, that's acceptable. I'll beg to differ, but that's acceptable. Okay. So my other KPIs to track, now they're you can have an infinite set of KPIs to track, right? Some places you do 65, some places they do 70, but really there's probably 25 or less um, KPIs that if you focus on them real hard, you'll get what you need. And again, I'm not saying that your um, goal and focus won't change over time, but I think this is a pretty good place to start with, right? Um, here, just a second. Okay. Um, so we hear these together and if you create a report that tells you what these are, you can have it all in one report or you can have it separately. Again, I hope you have a great point of sale system. Uh, I would love to hear from you on the chat, um, what point of sale you're using, shopware, tech metric, RO rider, auto leap. Are, you know, any of those Mitchell, um, I would love to know. So if you could just put that in there, that'd be great as well. So most of you, I think, are familiar with all of these KPIs to track. You've got average repair order. You've got car count. Um, your closing ratio is huge. It's not quite as important as your average estimate, I don't think, but it, it can help you diagnose issues with um, your sales team and things like that. Your weekly sales. So all of those I would kind of group together in one, one level. Uh, parts gross profit, labor gross profit, net percentage, our repair order. And we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. What should your labor hours per repair order be? And also looking in the future, I think that uh, labor hours per repair order uh, is going to be huge because in the future, in the next 10 years, 15 years, instead of having a 50-50 mix with parts and labor, we may have a 60 to 40% mix with labor parts or even 70% labor parts, depending on how deep the electric industry goes. And that's a whole 
whole other topic. Um, I'm going to stop and look at the chat here real quick. Yes. So, so this first one up here said you use Mitchell and right now it's not offered. So if you have a, a, a point of sale like that, it, you're correct, it's not offered and you're gonna have to track it either through an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. And so my other question is, is are you doing repair order audits? Are you looking at everything that's written every week and seeing where the breakdown in processes and procedures are? I got a tech metric and a protractor and tech metrics pretty good about it. It tells it mainly in labor hours and then protractor has a pretty good report. That. That's all you're doing at. Um, and I know, like I said, most of those other ones are pretty good. Um, so again, your productivity and your effective labor rate, right? So hopefully everybody's looking at productivity and, and how your technicians are. And I'm going to go into that just a little bit more here in just a minute. And your effective labor rate. How do we, how do we track that? How do we look at it and, and what things go into it? Um, your technician cost as a percent and your service advisor cost as a percent. And again, I'm going to go a bit deeper. Um, if you don't have a point of sale system that will tell you all that, you need to create a flash report. And what does that flash report look like? Um, it has all of these things in it. If you're with a coaching company, like for us, we have our, our autofix uh, profit gateway. You put your numbers in it and we have like 25 KPIs that pop up and go from red to green, depending on how you're doing. Um, a lot of the time, some of your point of sale companies can create a flash report like this for you. You're already paying them. It never hurts to ask. I would get out there and for sure, okay, um, I want your point of sale system to do, or my point of sale system to do this. And I will tell you if your point of sale system is weak in reporting, uh, Unfortunately, it's time to switch to another point of sale system. The new point of sale systems are so great at what they do. Um, you should be able to click a button and go up and look at a flash report and see where you're at with these metrics. Um, and they're most of the newer cloud based ones, they're making updates every day. Where I know sometimes we used to have Mitchell in our loop shop that we had and it may be a month or two or never before we get an update. When the update was, it was usually something that we couldn't use. So um, there's definitely things out there and move to, you know, better reporting because the reporting is your scorecard for success, right? That's what your income statement is, is your scorecard for success and make sure you're tracking that. Um, and so here's my bonus KPI and a lot of you guys may, may do this. It goes to productivity, but I don't know. Know if you've looked at it this way and i'm going to in just a minute we're going to talk about it but um, what i mean by lost lettuce is if you look at what we do versus the um, restaurant industry if you have food that sits on the shelf and it goes past the expiration date and you're hang on just a second let me check that um, okay maddie i saw that we'll see i'm not sure let me check my internet here real quick. Okay. Should be pretty good. Um, so again, the, the, the lost lettuce restaurant industry, food spoiling. So if we look at labor as the food in our business and the lettuce in our business, and at the end of the week, we have to throw it out then what happens with that? Obviously we can't ever resell it. So we have to look at and or track it. Um, and so here's one of the ones that I do for my clients is I have, a, I have this tracker and we have the technicians in there, the labor amount that they sold, the labor hour or sold clock hours. Okay. Uh, the effective labor rate for each technician individually, and hopefully you have a good point of sale system. It, it hopefully it tracks it that way, but uh, sometimes it may not. But what I want to talk about is this category right here is the lost lettuce. So 
for this guy Tyler up here, he worked 36.8 hours, but we only sold or we only collected 22.2 hours. So, you know, there's a difference between what we sell and what we collect. So we're losing out about 14 hours a week on this on this technician. And then we've got some where we're positive, so we're doing great. But at the end, we come out to 40.7 hours. So honestly, this tells me that either we have one technician too many or we're losing some collection either from not selling diag diagnostic time correctly, uh, letting the technicians run over on time and things like that. So unfortunately, this is what you have to throw out at the end of the week. You have to toss out all your lost lettuce and that's time that you'll never get back, right? So um, I think for you to be looking at and moving forward with. Um, the other thing I was gonna tell you is anybody that wants this, this technician tracker with the lost lettuce on it, if you'll send me an email to chris at autofixsos.com, I'll make you one. It'll be in a Google um, Sheets format and I can send it to you. Just let, just in the subject say, hey, give me the lettuce and give me the name of the shop. And then I'll let you fill in your technicians and and the other stuff if you guys would like that if you think that's a useful tool for you to have so again tracking the lost lettuce and the build hours and the worked hours so goals what should the target be so again as a coach this is what i found to make a successful shop and obviously anytime you reach these numbers if you can get them or better than great um, I have some shops that excel at all these, and I have some that excel in four or five and and don't in the others. Um, but this gives you a goal, right? Because if it, again, if we can't track it and measure it and we don't have the goal, then we can't do anything else with it, right? So obviously, parts gross, gross, gross profit, 55% or better. Um, I realize parts is kind of touchy, and it has been, and people are always more parts price conscious than they are labor price conscious, right? Um, and so the labor GP, I think as an industry, we should be at 75% or better. Um, we have to do a great labor analysis for our technician, including the tax and benefit load and set ourselves up for success and make sure that our, um, our effective labor rate is 90% or better of what our actual labor rate is. Um, People are going to look at tires and think I'm nuts, but I've done, I've been in the tire side of the industry. That's how I started out and transitioned from tires to auto service. And if done properly, you can get 35% or better on your tires. But when you look at that, it depends on how you break it down in your point of sale. Um, are you making a margin on your tires? Do you include your backside money in that? Do you include any co-op funds in that? Um, are you selling an in-house road hazard, not something like Sancio puts out or anything like that? And do you include the, the labor for the dismount and mount and installation in there? And so there's a couple different ways to track it. And I'm fine with you if you do it another way, um, but I highly recommend, and I know that this is doable. Um, again, I'd like to know either thumbs up or thumb thumbs down how many of you guys do sell tires? Sell tires? Then we need to be talking because everybody should at least be selling tires to their current client, to their current customers. I mean, um, total, total gross profit, 65% or better. And the reason why that's important is if we want this next number, it has to, it has to be there, right? Um, unless you're running like a really, really tight ship on your fixed expenses, and we're going to talk about fixed expenses in a minute. But if, if I'm trying to get you to a net gross profit of 25% or better. We have to have it on the top end to make it on the bottom end. And I realize that the net depends a lot on what the owner's taking out of the business and things like that. But any, any shop, when they sign with me, my goal for them is, is how do we get them to 25% or better net GP? And that's after you pay for yourself as well. You're going to pay for yourself in your fixed expenses. And this is the 25% outside of that. Um, car count. I want you to have enough to be successful. I know this is kind of a, a dumb thing to put in there, 
but some people need more cars. Some people need fewer, fewer cars, just need to do better with the cars that they already have. And that goes back to the average estimate, your closing ratio, things like that. So what I would tell you is you have to identify how many cars do I need to be successful? What is holding me back from my goals and targets as far as what I want as a shop? And how do I adjust the car count, estimate, closing ratio, and things like that in order to get there? Okay, because all those things are intertwined. Uh, closing ratio, 50 percent or better. Um, I think 50% is like a so-so grade. If, if you're not closing 50% of what you write, um, I'd say we got issues. And if you're down in the 35%, we have a lot of issues. Um, my ultimate goal for my shops is 65% or better. And that's European diesel, general repair. I want to close 65% or better. Um, and I do have some that close 75, 80% of what they write. The labor hours per repair order. Okay. And so this, this goes into one of the things that I talked about earlier is, is what should my average repair order for the shop be? And any, what should my labor hours per repair order be? So it's three hours for general repair and then four and a half hours per um, European and diesel shop. These, I've been in the industry for 28 years. This is what I think is pretty standard and doable. I have some of each that do more than that. Um, and again, if you want to put in the chat what your labor hours per repair order is currently, I would love to see it. Okay. And I already talked about this a minute ago. The effective labor rate of 90% per rate um, should be 90% of your labor rate or better. Um, I've got a couple of shops that are 100% plus of what their labor rate is. But in those circumstances, we've really dialed in on the diagnostics, um, who does what, how we assign. Um, our work and everything like that. So your target average repair order for a general repair shop should be six times your labor rate. This is pretty much the industry standard. Um, I think most co most coaching companies are yes or some may not. So if your if your um, labor rate or your door rate is 125 times six, then your average repair order should be 750. Um, and where we get that six number from is if we're looking for three hours from labor and or three hours of labor per ticket. And then for every dollar in labor we get, we get a dollar in parts. That's where the six comes from. OK, but again, realize that what I'm talking about, and what I'm seeing in the industry moving forward is. This is end up this. Is going to end up being tweaked eventually because we're going to have labor to parts 70. 30 labor to parts. And so this, this is really going to start to change over the next couple of years, I think, I believe. If you do mostly and or all diesel repair and or a Euro specialty shop, um, your average repair order should be nine times your labor rate. So if you're looking at uh, 149 labor rate for diesel and Euro shop times nine, your average repair order goal should be 1341. Um, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the audience. Do you guys have a set average repair order that you guys are shooting for every week? And if so, how do you, how do you move it forward and how do you use that with your people to make sure that we're getting there and what's holding us back? Um, and then, so again, if, if our average repair order is this high, what does our average estimate have to be? Or where do we go to get our average estimate? So expense control, again, these numbers are what I believe where you should be at. If you're one of my clients, this is where I'm trying to take you. So the technician cost, when sales loaded, your service advisor should be seven to 10% of sales loaded and or your service advisors, right? If you have a big shop and you have more than one, then we have to stack those people up when we're doing a pay plan and be Okay, how does this fit in to what to what I'm doing? And if you notice over here, I'm saying depending on capabilities. So if you have a shop and you have one service advisor or two service advisors, and if they call in sick and you have to work the counter 
or you still have to to work with technicians and because of your service advisor capability you still have to spend time working in the business and not on it that's down to the seven percent range if you can walk away or hop on a plane and fly to hawaii for a month and call in and check in once a week then that's worth you know up to 10 percent. or you know i've had some that are up to 12 or 15 percent, right so what is that freedom worth to you what is having a shop that runs mostly on its own and independent of you worth having so the more capable these people are the higher I think that should be. Owner pay should be 7% of sales loaded, not including profit disbursements. Okay. So when I talk about that, if you have a million dollar shop, then your pay should be in the $70,000 a year range. What you take out, what you take out in salary every week, monthly, however you pay, pay for yourself. Now that does not include the profit disbursements. Okay when the way we do the auto shop profits and cash flow is we set it up we put the put the money in the accounts and depending on what our goals are we're going to put money every monday in the the owner pay account or the disbursement account or the at the end of the quarter we're going to take take half of that and take it in a lump sum and the other half of that is going to go into a holding account and then at the end of the year um, after we pay our taxes and everything else, if you have money in it, you can take it back as a lump sum. But I'm also telling you, if you have a million dollar shop, I'm expecting you to take 70,000 out in pay. And I'm also expecting my goal is to drop a quarter of a million dollars to the bottom line. And if you handle the cash flow and everything incorrectly, you should actually feel that. A lot of times I ask my clients, um, are you feeling that in your checkbook? And if you're not, if at the bottom at the end of every month you're out of cash flow you're still worrying about your bills and everything then we got to figure out what else is going on um, with your business i get this question all the time chris what should my rent be well one thing the only the only way you can talk about your your rent is if you have control over your rent if you're paying your rent to yourself then what can you make it be or what does it matter it varies by location and over, overall, what can you do about it? If you have a successful business, the rent is what it is. This is one of the things that you can't really control. And, and we have two variables or one variable that we can't control at all, which is the rent. Advertising depends on um, what we're trying to do. And I'm talking about that for a minute. And then the fixed cost is a range. Um, so advertising depending remember that slide earlier where it talked about you know car count um what do you need to be successful well that 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 goes into here right so do i need fewer cars if so your ad budget shrinks do i need more cars then your ad budget goes ahead but it's three to five percent of sales is where i'm at and that should include your website any promotional items and your ad spend and when i talk about ad spend i'm talking about whoever's doing your Google My Business, or I'm sorry, your Google AdWords, whoever's doing that, and whoever's doing um, your Facebook ads. And I'm not talking about boosting posts or anything like that. I'm talking about somebody that actually manages the ad suite in Facebook. And if you don't know what that is, um, there's, a, there's a place in there and you need to get with somebody that can go in deeper with that. Um, but it also includes whatever you're spending so if you pay somebody 300 dollars a month to manage your facebook ads you're probably going to spend four four to five hundred dollars a month on the actual ads themselves and there's a way to track and control those ads and see how everything's going same thing with adwords if you're paying somebody 300 dollars a month for adwords and then you're spending 500 dollars a month on the actual ads themselves um, i would say as shop owners you guys can do pretty much everything but it's really, really tricky when you get into Facebook ads and, and Google AdWords. I spend a lot of time learning about them and talking about them. And even I have just like a basic understanding of, of what to do with it. You really need somebody on your side of making sure that your Google AdWords are optimized and your Facebook ads are getting out 
what the click the cost per click is and everything else like that. Um, so the total fixed cost on your expenses is no more than 30%. You can go down line by line and look at, okay, this needs to be 1%, this needs to be 2%, this needs to be 3%. Everybody's business runs differently. And so it's really, really hard number to run down. But what I'm telling you is if your total fixed cost expense, which the owner should be in that, is not more than 30%. So lower is better to hit that 25% net number. But as long as you're 30% or less on your fixed cost expense, it really doesn't matter all the little ones, okay? Do the best you can on rent. Advertising for growth should be about 5% of sales with everything in. Advertising to maintain about 3% of sales. So if you're looking to grow your business and you want a million dollar shop, the minimum you need to be spending is about $50,000, okay? And if, so if you have a million dollar shop, your fixed expenses should not be more than $300,000 per year, period, end of story. That includes your pay and then everything else that you have in fixed expenses. And I realize some um, move things around and have, have things that other people don't. And Hunt and I did a great class um, a couple of months ago about that. You can find that on our YouTube channel. The other thing I would tell you and something that helped everybody, all of my clients and other people get through the last year with the PPP, the idle loans, is you need to be following some sort of auto shop profits and cash flow process and or procedure. How does your money move through your business? How do you look at that money and what's it doing for you? Don't, don't get lackadaisical with your cash because cash is king. It always has been and it will be, okay? Um, and, and so having said all of that, I wanna tell you guys this. It's, it sounds way simple, but if you keep two groups of people happy and you have your processes and procedures in place, your business will run smoothly and profitable. And, and who are those two groups of people, right? They're your internal customers and your external customers. If you're service advisors unhappy and they're not doing a great job of providing superior customer service and giving all your customers 100% attention, then your external customers are not going to be happy. If your technician hates his job and all they do is complain about everything, they have a pay plan that they can't explain to their spouse, so their spouse is always, you need more money, you need more money. If that person's unhappy, then it's going to show up in other areas, right? So as a shop owner, you have a couple of key areas is where, you, where working is one, making sure the internal customers are happy and making sure they're taking care of your external customers, making sure that everybody's customer experience is great. Three, make sure that your car count is sufficient for success and that's either enough or cutting back. And then finally, making sure that your business is on a great financial footing and you're able to take care of your employees and everybody else and including yourself you know your family depends on this and i want you guys to be happy i cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure that your internal customers are happy um, i make it a great point to talk in coaching about going around to each employee uh, as you transition out of the business or whatever, somebody else should take over the role, but you should spend a couple of minutes every week with all of your employees, put your hand on their back or pull them into a room and say, hey, um, how are you doing? Especially with the crisis we had in the, this last year, um, it, instead of stuff rolling downhill, it kind of, it, it flowed uphill, right? The kids are at home, the spouse is unhappy, she's at home or he's at home watching the kids and trying to teach them school. They complain to your employee and sometimes it stops there and your employee doesn't have any place to go for their mental fitness. So check in with your employees, make sure that they're doing great and then talk about what they're doing well and areas to improve, okay? So guys, that's it. I wanted to keep this portion short um, to answer any questions you had. and everything like that. Uh, my phone number is 580-491-3519. Uh, 
my new website that just came out is autoshopcoaching.com. We just upgraded logos and things like that. And then uh, my email, chris at autofixsos.com. Um, I, I hope that gave you some sort of idea where I'm at with numbers. And really what I wanted to do, and I think I kind of went off the rails on Maddie here is because I think she was expecting like a long list of advertising should be this, this should be that, and that should be that. Sometimes as shop owners, we over analyze way too much. Um, there you should pay attention to, but there are some things that if they're in the range, I think it's, I think it's good to go when you're happy there. So um, I'm going to ask for questions. If anybody's got any or comments, if you just want to want to hop on and be like, Chris, I think you're nuts. Then that, I'm fine with that too. Cause I'll, I can work with that. Um, but Pop in the chat. And I'm sorry if I'm still cutting out. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, okay. So, come on, guys. Questions, rocks, throw something at me. Okay. Well, that's, I'm going to let Maddie close. If, again, you guys have my information. Um, feel free to contact me anytime. Like I said, that phone number is my cell phone number. Um, as long as I'm awake, I answer it. So, um, hey, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that. Sometimes I'm just up here talking and I don't have a clue if it was any good or not. So uh, I appreciate it. Um, uh, yes, we'll be available. Maddie's going to send out a link to it and, and a, a redo. And then also uh, whenever she gets done, she'll share it with me and I'll share it on my YouTube channel as well. So I'm going to step aside, Maddie, and let you wrap it up. Um, I hope everybody has a great day. And again, thanks, Maddie and Trisha for having me on and being flexible in the schedule and everything. Thank you, Chris. I think you did an excellent job. You're not nuts. <laughs> I think that was, that went very well. Um, and yeah, a lot of good info. And, you know, it's not always in the details because not everything, it's not just a unique pattern that works for every shop. It's, it's something that has to be changed. And I think that you did very well at highlighting that. And yes, uh, Jason, this will be recorded and I will send out the link to everybody that registered. And if you did not register, it's okay. I will send it um, on our Facebook page and then Chris will also add it to his YouTube channel as well. So you should be able to find the video, no problem. With that, I hope everybody has a good rest of their lunch and rest, <clears throat> excuse me, and rest of their day. Thank you.